All right, everybody, welcome to a new uh, review. This time around, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at the conservation of mass, conservation of momentum, and conservation of energy principles that you will definitely be tested in the FE exam, okay? When you look at the FE exam manual, you will see that they are not consecutive on the pages, okay? So conservation of mass and conservation of energy is starting on page 180. First, I'm gonna review those. And then I'm going to switch gears to page 186 and continue with the conservation of uh, momentum where you will be able to get some force relationships, okay? All right, let's get started. Um, the first and the easiest is the conservation of mass and the name is also known as continue to equation and I'm going to put it up here. Um, basically what it says is m.1 is equal to m.2. This is coming from your uh, reference uh, manual, right? Um, and m.1 is called mass flow rate and that is obtained by having density times velocity times area okay and velocity times area is called volumetric flow rate that is also important and if my density is constant and that's a good assumption for liquids right um, i will be able to write densities are cancelling so i get myself um, volumetric flow rate one is equal to volumetric flow rate two right um, one thing to highlight though, I looked at the uh, real FE exams. These equations that is listed in the reference manual is only for one inlet, one outlet. But I have personally seen FE exam questions when there will be multiple exits, as an example, I've seen that, okay? As opposed to, so now this equation is kind of uh, need to be modified. So I'm going to write it down for you right now. And you will see that I changed it a little bit and I say that the sum of the m dots at the inlet is equal to sum of the m dots at the exit, right? So let's say that I have two exits and one inlet. So then what's going to be, be is m dot one inlet will be equal to m dot two, one of the outlet, plus m dot three, which is the second outlet. The next is the conservation of energy. Basically what they boil down to is the Bernoulli's equation. You kind of know that. You see the equation in here. There are two versions of it actually. I can divide, as you see this is the official Bernoulli's equation, but I can divide both sides of the equation by G, why not, right? So I can go ahead and divide that and you will obtain this equation. And now this equation has special names for each term. The first term is called the pressure head. The second term is called the velocity head. And the third term is called the elevation head, okay? And the units of each term is in length. So like pressure head is not in Pascal or PSI, it's in length, okay? Something to note in here. Um, this will come in handy because there are two concepts that uh, they may test you on. One is called the hydraulic line, the other one is the energy line. So the energy line um, is basically the summation of these three terms, pressure head, velocity head, elevation head. You sum them up, as you can see if this is, uh, there's no loss, Right? As you will see that that will be constant value because the summation you can see from point 0.1 to point 0.2. Right? Uh, that's something to note. And the other one is the hydraulic grade line. And the hydraulic grade line is basically the summation of the elevation head and the pressure head. So basically you're missing the velocity head. Right? So you sum them up and it can be shown that this is the sum. If you have like let's say there's a flow in this direction, if any point that I pick this will be the height of, the, if I have a piezometer stuck to the points, you will see that that will be the height of that column, all right? Also, one thing to note, so far, this will come in now, I'm going to go to the impulse or conservation momentum, same thing. Uh, but one thing that you, need, you should note, both in the conservation of mass and conservation of energy, these are scalar equations. What I mean is there's no components in the x direction, the y direction, the sine theta, the cosine theta. When I start looking at the conservation of momentum, it will get a little bit denser because now I will have two separate velocities. One velocity will be the one that I'm covering now. The other one will be the component of the velocity in the X and Y. Okay? Um, I would like you to note that because you don't want to make a mistake here. So there's no sine or cosine or negative sine. Simply two, two times five is equal to five times two. You know, that's it. All right? That's what this equation is about. The next fundamental principle I'm going to cover is the conservation of momentum, right? And in your uh, reference manual, it's referred as impulse momentum principle, okay? Now, this is a vector equation, so that's a different one. Be careful about it, okay? The other thing is, I don't know why, but the conservation of mass and energy 
is on page 180 and 181 and there's like four page additional information and now on page 186 is where this uh, conservation of momentum is one thing is you have a search option in the real FE exam um, but from our own students that I had uh, extensive conversations with it seems it may take a bit of a time to really find what you're looking for okay I want you to get a general idea of where it's at okay that's why I'm mentioning the page numbers 186 all right so what I'm gonna do is basically I'm gonna put the formula up here so this formula although it looks complicated is nothing more nothing less than f is equal to ma all right um, it's just applied to a fluidic uh, control uh, volume all right q is the volumetric flow rate and you see the velocity over here so that velocity is not the same velocity as I had in the conservation of mass or continuity equation that was a scalar so this v will have the sine the cosine right because look at it it's a vector equation be careful about that one all right um, and also I'm not sure why they did that but this number two highlights the exit so that's the special thing about two they should have said exit I guess and the inlet is one that's why there's a summation sign something to note then the reference manual actually was nice enough to give you some common um, equations that you may need the first is uh, the pipe bends enlargement and contractions is what they call it but basically I'll put the figure in here as well it's uh, important that you follow the figure I'm on page 186 in the 10th edition of the FE reference manual but think of this as I have a garden hose and I kind of bend it right and see what happens note that when I have something enclosed like a garden hose and air kind of pipe PVC pipe beam could be right what will happen is there will be a pressure gradient that's why now you're looking at the equations you can see that there's a p1a1 p2a2 sine theta cosine theta because these are vector equations all right so this is something to note and this is given to you I think this will come in real handy so make sure that you have access to this particular equation easily during the examination and the next page page 187 they are looking at the blades um, and deflectors one thing I want to highlight is actually there's no need this for this particular formula um, what this is is let me explain what I'm talking about here I still have the garden hose but right now the garden hose ends before this bend and the water is think about this like a circular section is flying up in the air okay that's what they are referring to and the only difference between the enclosed one and this particular blade is that you're not gonna have any pressure difference because as I said it's out in the air so the pressure one will be if you're using gauge zero if you are using p2 that will be zero as well so if I look at the previous equation that I drive just write p1 is equal to zero p2 is equal to zero you get the equation that they write in on page 187 of your reference manual on page 188 they also look at the if the blade or the deflector is moving all right again that's not a huge deal as well what simply happens is let's say that this blade is on a wheel and traveling this way is three meter per second and if your velocity is coming at five you just look at the relative velocity so it's going to be five minus three in that particular case so you're going to insert two in the section v1 all right the thing is a little bit more complicated is the other one but they have the equation written to you so you may want to refer this back to the equation if and the question will be very clear in the FE exam if you need to see it they will be saying that hey this is the velocity of the blade so the next next impulse um, or conservation of momentum uh, principle that's very traditional that we apply is something called jet propulsion once I mentioned the word jet propulsion you may be like whoa it's a fancy name basically what happens is I have a tank water tank and I had an orifice so basically I have a small opening at the bottom and the water is shooting out of that particular tank that's all there is to it right and then when I apply my Bernoulli's equation to this particular case as the diameter of that particular opening will be too small compared to the level that's dropping down I'm going to obtain from Bernoulli's V is equal to square root of 2GH right and if I'm interested in the Q which is the volumetric flow rate I'm going to multiply that by A area right one thing, one thing good in, on page 187 of the reference manuals 
they were nice enough to give you the fourth relationship over here as well. If you're interested in the fourth, it's right there, right? And there's a couple version of, versions of it, but they're all the same thing. So basically, instead of Q, you insert V2 times, which is square root of 2GH times the 8 into it, and you get these two equations, okay? So that pretty much uh, sums up uh, this uh, particular uh, concepts. It is an in-depth concept. I will solve multiple questions for you to practice so you're, you know, armed with the appropriate resources when you go into the FA exam. Thank you for watching this.